Now we've been using AI tools quite extensively in this course already, but we need to talk about two aspects of use of AI tools in your teaching. So one aspect is to support your own lesson preparation, um, writing letters to parents, report comments, things of that nature, even down to using it to help assist in assessing students. So there's a range of different productivity tools related to AI technologies. And you've been seeing quite a bit of that in your course material so far. But there's also aspects you need to consider around the use of AI more generally and also in your teaching and in how your students use AI for their learning. We'll be exploring that in a little bit more detail later. But So there's some aspects around AI. One is around it can support personalization um, and differentiation. We've talked a little bit about this. But the idea that now that you can generate um, lesson plans and lesson material very quickly and easily, once you know your students and know their strengths and weaknesses and interests, you can very easily generate a range of different lesson plans that are suited and individualized for different students. This is differentiation. Now, traditionally it's been very difficult because it's time consuming to develop lesson plans and course material and so forth. Now, as technology makes that easier, it makes differentiation easier and individualization easier. Now, the other aspect of individualization and personalized learning is often when we use tools that students work through that can identify students' capabilities and then adjust the material and the activities that are presented to them um, through the actual learning tool itself. So this is again differentiation, but it's done automatically by the tool. So guided programming examples um, where they complete programming activities and if they get them correct, it gives them harder programming challenges. And if they get them incorrect, it will maybe give them easier ones or repeat the um, activity at that same level until they master that concept that they're trying to understand. So automated tutorial processes. So again, just like differentiated learning that you do at a classroom level, but done through the software. Uh, there's also automated grading and feedback. Now we see this most commonly through quizzes, but increasingly now we have automated grading tools that will analyze essays, and particularly for digital technologies, will analyze code and will um, unpack code. Now, ChatGTP could be used for that. You can copy um, students' code into ChatGTP and ask it to analyze and identify the strengths and weaknesses of that code. And then you can provide that feedback to your students or use that as part of their assessment. Or students could use ChatGDP to analyze their code and see how it could be improved and built upon. So a range of different aspects of AI. Uh, and there are a lot of AI tool now, tools now that are being developed to support coding and database development and a whole range of other um, aspects of digital technologies. We talked a little bit about intelligent tutoring systems. This is where they adapt to the student, and some of them are getting very, very advanced. Um, Wolfram Alpha is developing probably the most complex ones, but they rely upon detailed AI models of the students, and they build a particular model of each student, and they then adjust the presentation and activities that the students do, depending upon the AI's model understanding of that student. Just as you build an understanding of your students and you craft your lessons to suit your students and ideally to suit individual students, so can AI models, essentially doing the same process of what a teacher does. Then we've got the natural language processing models that we've seen so commonly now with ChatGTP, and we're going to be exploring some of the different ways we can utilize those in um, teaching digital technologies. And finally, data analysis. You collect a lot of data on your students through assessment, through attendance, through a range of different mechanisms where you collect data about students and about their learning. And analyzing that data can be complex and difficult. And increasingly now we have AI tools that will allow us to analyze that data and understand students' learning in more detailed ways. So the automated tutors do that as part of their processes, but we can also use that same processes to provide us with access to that analysis so that we can make better decisions 
as to students learning. Now, what I'd like you to use is some of the guided uh, prompt uh, tools that you'll see in the course material to explore how ChatGTP can be used for generating coding solutions, but also around data science for engaging with data and exploring data, uh, how it can be used with spreadsheets. Of course, in year seven and eight, we in particular look at the use of spreadsheets for uh, digital technologies. And there are a number of uh, tools now that can actually integrate with uh, spreadsheet tools that directly access the ChatGTP API and will help build out solutions based upon descriptions of what we want to see happen in the spreadsheet. It will then generate um, those responses. Um, then it's also their use in foreign language le learning, content creation, which you've been doing a fair bit in developing lesson plans, but students can also use for creating their own content for various activities that they may be engaged with, um, particularly in writing. So developing an acceptable use policy, helping it have a chat GTP, help them with that process, or writing a letter to the editor, um, asking that about the mobile phone policy in their school and arguing for, for or against that, or developing a, a debate and developing a series of responses to possible debate issues and questions. So lots of different uses that we can apply ChatGTP to and generative text um, in that respect. But also then just more mundanely in terms of developing their creativity, um, particularly around image generation, which is um, uh, generative images are very popular at the moment. And also just in terms of their academic work life, being able to manage their timing, um, scheduling, working out group dynamics, working out teamwork processes, um, identifying when they can all gather together for a team meeting. And there are now tools that facilitate those processes uh, through to coming up with uh, project management charts and working out the very stages of the project and when things have to be done and how to best um, structure all of those different elements through uh, uh, NART chats and things of like that in order to manage their time. So these are all elements of the use of AI around learning and teaching and classroom management. So they also require different thoughts around how we manage the classroom when students are using these tools, when it's appropriate for them to use the tools, when it's inappropriate, when we want them to do things themselves in order to develop their thinking skills and their capabilities, when we want them to utilize these tools to support them in those processes. So you need to set expectations and an understanding of when it's appropriate, particularly when it comes to assessment, where we need to be able to authentically assess students' capabilities. Now that may change as a result of AI. We may assess different capabilities, but if we're assessing a capability that AI can readily um, replicate, then we may have to think about how we do assessment in a way that they, students don't have access to the AI or use it in a way where they acknowledge that use of the AI and we can identify what component the students contributed and what components the AI contributed. So there's a range of different things that need to be considered around that. Um, and we can develop what are called uh, behavioral contracts. We might involve parents in some of those decision-making processes and we use positive reinforcement. So we recognize when students do things well, don't just have a negative reinforcement uh, regime around your behavior management. So don't just always penalize students. When students do something appropriately and well, they should receive some acknowledgement and indeed in some cases some reward. Well, that needs to be done carefully. Um, it can go into what's called extrinsic reward, where students only then uh, behave appropriately when they know they're receiving a reward. That's not what we want to achieve. Um, we want to have what's called intrinsic reward or intrinsic behavior, where students will want to behave appropriately uh, for their own intrinsic benefit, what they feel is beneficial to them. So part of that, is we need to um, train teach, uh, students to understand that there are times when we want AI to be used as an assistant, but there are times when we need to develop our own capacity to do things so that we can make AI be more effective. 
Um, we can't generate really good prompts if we don't understand the task ourselves. If we can uh, create a good simple computer game ourselves and know how to use iteration and selection and modularity and those fundamentals, then we can understand how to make the computer game and then use uh, generative AI tools to make it better. But we've still been able to demonstrate the capacity ourselves to do certain things, but then we've used the generative tools to improve upon that and to explore new things. Um, so our learning objectives are still achieved while still achieving what we want to um, go beyond those with. So that again comes down to assessment decisions and you need to think about what it is you really need to assess, which is often the core basics. Do students understand iteration? The fact that they've used iteration to make a really fantastic computer game with lots and lots of different objects moving around and so forth, you need to narrow in how they've understood iteration. Um, have they used nested iteration? Have they been able to um, cope with variables within loops and outside of loops and things of that nature? That's what you're exploring. Not necessarily the quality of the computer game that they may have then utilized other tools such as AI tools to assist them to take those basic understandings and go beyond that.